you're listening to a Mash Those Buttons podcast. Visit mashthosebuttons.com for a full podcast schedule. Cargo secured. Extraction complete. Intelligent system analytic computer is activated. All ISAT systems are confirmed online. Data scanned. Downloading files. What's up, guys? You're listening to episode 68 of Sit Rep Radio, giving you the news and other happenings in the world of The Division. This week, we finally get a release date for the long-awaited update 1.7 that will bring commendations and global events to the live game. But first, my name is Mike, and joining me, as always, are my co-hosts, Robert. Hello. And Luke. Hello. Hello. Uh, and I hope you guys and our listeners have had a great week. Uh, before we jump straight into the, ne- the news this week, uh, there is a DCW event that is taking place this coming weekend. Luke, do you have the details on that? I do. Um, we're raising money for um, an agent of, of, of the division that unfortunately passed away recently, Agent Brian. Um, so come along to the streams. Everybody from the previous DCWs is taking part again this time. Um, bring your wallets with you, donate. All, every, everything that gets donated is going to his family. Um, and let's just hang out and, and raise some money. Sounds good. Uh, I know there's a lot of people from the community that will be streaming over the weekend, including ourselves. Uh, what we're we looking at, I think Saturday night for us, British Standard Time, probably after eight o'clock, somewhere around then. I know nothing's confirmed, but I guess we'll let you know on the social medias and that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I hope you're both well. Very well, thank you. Yourself? I'm good. Yeah, I'm grand. That being said, let's get on with some news. State of the game. Okay, so first up, uh, for all you folks out there that just want to get warmed up before the update 1.7 arrives, there is a double field proficiency cash event happening this weekend, which will be going on from today, which is Thursday the 10th of August till Sunday the 13th. And you will get two caches every time you get a field proficiency cash. Try saying that five times when you're drunk, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> no, I refuse. I bloody refuse. And I think the best thing that's come out of this week's State of the Game is we finally have a release date for update 1.7. Robert, it's going to kick off the Division Year 2, finally. When is it coming? I called it last week, uh, August the 15th. You did. I was wrong. You, you, called, you called Massive and you were like, bitch, next Tuesday, man. It's when it's got to drop. I called mm-hmm. it. But yeah, uh, I think it's been mentioned before, but we actually have some final confirmation of what is actually going to be happening once update 1.7 drops. Luke, what is the first global event that's going to be dropping when it comes next Tuesday? It's the Outbreak event, which is the first one that everybody got to try who was lucky enough to be on the PTS. Are you looking forward to checking that out? It should be uh, quite interesting to see how that modifier plays out because, I mean, I was one of the people that didn't actually try the global events out. I was more interested in terms with the balance of the actual patch than anything else. I but, yeah. tried it for a couple of hours. It was it was good fun. It's the one with the um, extra headshot damage modifier applied. It's good fun. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking. I'm looking forward to see how like team play, especially with that, because obviously we weren't we weren't all playing together at the same time through the PTS. So no. it'd be interesting to get our group together and uh, go play it. Uh, Rob, what what else have we actually got coming for listeners that don't know? with update 1.7 just a very quick brief overview as Uh, i'm sure we will go into great detail next week uh they're implementing all the commendations and patches and the masks that we've all been waiting for and they keep like teasing us with so they're not actually showing us anything and the character customization in the terminal yeah that kind of drops out of nowhere didn't it like they were like, oh, guys, guess what? You can just change your change your customization on your face now. But like um, the full patch notes, they said they're going to be released on Monday. Because I'm I'm kind of I'm interested. It is the because f- didn't they say that all resources are going to be shared between characters? Yes. yes. I'm interested if that's still happening. I think the only the no. only thing that wasn't shared from what I can remember from PTS was um, Phoenix credits. Right. I think. 
Or maybe that's the one that didn't increase the amount you could have. Yeah, because that, that's already shared anyway. Uh, that's it. Yeah, sorry. My yeah. mistake. I think the other thing I'm looking forward to with the patch notes is, uh, I don't know about you guys, but there always tends to be like that one thing that's like, oh, we didn't know that was coming. Whoa, holy shit. Or that we just completely <laughs> blanked it or something like that. So it'd be quite nice to get Rob to read through the patch notes. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> he's looking forward to I'm that. I'm looking forward to that, yeah. I, I know I keep threatening about it, but... Um, got, one, of days I'm gonna, one of these days I'm going to tag it on one of the videos that I do. I, I no, I think you should just sit in front of your camera and just read read the patch notes. I mean, I don't think they'll be as good as Jeff Kaplan's that he does for Overwatch. Because if anybody's watched the Overwatch um, community update for the patch that goes like goes live from that, the dude just sits there and reels off all the updates in one hit. That's it. No show notes or anything. Just reels off all of his head. So you got wow. some high expectations, Rob. But yeah, what else have we got coming? We've got uh, or. Well, news-wise, have we actually got going on this week? Uh, classified gear sets that will be coming with next week's global event. We have Lone Star, Final Measure, and Deadeye are confirmed to be live next week. Those are the ones you're going to be chasing. Uh, guys, which ones are you going to be chasing next Tuesday? Final Measure, for sure. Lone Star. Does this mean I have to go Deadeye? It'd be different? Or... <laughs> Well, it would make life easier if you did that. Because then, like, when True. I get a dead eye piece, I can just chuck it at you. When I get Lone Star, I can just chuck it at Luke. Throw them at each other. Yeah, it'd be mm. good. It's going to be quite interesting to see how uh, those three builds play together. And, you know, we've got, like, what, a month after next Tuesday, and then the second one goes live where we're going to see some PvP. I, you know, these are going to bring some PvP differences already because we've got the Ninja Backpack. I know it wasn't mentioned on the state of the game, but that's going to be a game changer when it gets released with update 1.7 next week. We're going to, I think we're going to see a lot more variances on builds. I know you guys are looking forward to running that and testing that out. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but yeah, Lone Star, see how that is with, is it shotguns? I know we Luke will went not on a little shotguns. bit. <laughs> Come on, dude. I know, I know. I'm just, I'm interested to see how the community reacts to that next week. Uh, what are the like minor changes did we get, Rob? With um, like very quickly post PTS, um, they've changed the stable talent. Um, they've reduced it to ten percent because people are were abusing with Alpha Bridge, um, getting a level twenty five, a twenty nine weapon because that's how you can get it on a gun, and they're abusing it to make like really stable builds yeah i um, also see like there's a lot of people kicking off about this change already even though it's been what four hours three hours since uh state of the game about the defense build oh yeah the pvp oh, modifier what's... yeah thing is we don't know because they hinted at it they that that in 1.8, the defense is going to get uh, classified so that we don't know what's going to happen there. So there's probably a good reason for them doing this. Yeah. It'll be, uh, yeah. I've seen, few, like, yeah I reckon. I've seen a few PVE is not very happy on Twitter that they've removed the plus 30% shield health from the three piece as well. Right. That's now, I can't remember if it was 10% or 20%. Um, I think it was 10% damage to elites. Damage to elites, yeah. Yeah, um, but I mean, I did see a tweet just before uh, we start recording tonight. Uh, Yannick put out basically answering somebody's question where um, the PvP modifiers are clients, uh, not client side, server side, so they can tweak stuff like that. So if it is an issue, it hasn't got to be in like a huge patch or a minor update or anything like that. That is, just, you know, going to be OP or underpowered for a great amount of time. They can kind of tweak that on the move. Mm -hmm. uh obviously global event caches um drop rates were reiterated as being confirmed from last week uh luke what any info on that i mean it was pretty much just listen back to last week's episode of the podcast yeah or... they, they said they were just they were going ahead with what they announced last week so um two guaranteed drops 45 percent chance of it being classified 
can't remember how they broke it down, but such and such a percentage of a, a normal gear set and a, a quite a low percentage of getting a um, exotic. And then yeah, it's like eleven percent or something. Like yeah, that. it's quite quite low the exotic, quite high to get another uh, just a quote unquote standard gear piece. Um, and then a twelve and a half percent chance of getting a bonus third item. And if you do get a bonus third item, it's a ninety percent chance of being a classified, which is pretty decent. Nice. And uh, global event tokens. Uh, apparently, these had a huge issue not dropping properly across like various p- parts of content in the game uh, during the PTS, and hopefully, should be in full working order for release next Tuesday. Cool. And obviously, huge topic in the community over the past couple of weeks was the encrypted caches. Was it encrypted caches? Or am I thinking of something else? Mm-hmm. I've gone blank. But yeah, uh, they have a 20% drop rate key, uh, for the actual key fragments themselves, and they will be dropping from named bosses in the dark zone. Um, but we don't know if they're actually going to drop in underground just yet, so we'll have to wait until the game goes live uh rob something i know you you're quite interested in uh we actually have some news on lag this week and what's actually been going on um i know you talked about it a little bit last week didn't you yeah yeah they basically explained that it was um the desynchronization of between client and server and like what you see compared to what the person shooting you sees um is completely different because of the the desync, but I don't know. It's I just they need they need someone on there to explain it. I guess they said they're going to try and do that, on, but I don't know. Yeah, I get. I can, I'm guessing it's quite difficult to kind of explain technical, you know, technical difficulties that they're obviously happening, but um, happening having. Um, but I think the fact that once again, you know, they've acknowledged it. They said they were going to talk about it. All right, they didn't give us like the full details on on it as it's still in investigation at the minute. So there's no major update apart from the fact that it was a load of minor bugs due to desynchronization. So hopefully they can get that sorted out and things will be a little bit better than they are currently. Um, obviously, yeah. I think the player base coming back for 1.7 is going to help. A little bit. Well, I don't, it depends whether that's the issue or not. Because, like, desync happens on, on every game. Like, you get it. And it, it just it seems to be happening more often in, on the division. More and more frequently for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah. Or maybe just more people are moaning about it. I don't know. Yeah. But we know people like to moan in this game, so... Yeah. The, the lag it is quite be a long standing complaint, though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, if it is the desync, I know PUBG suffered with a problem with desync last week, didn't they? And they, yeah. they fixed it in a few hours. I'm not saying, obviously, PUBG is anywhere near as complicated as the division is, but it, it would kind of make sense. But you'd think they would have found something out about it a long time ago. Because, like I say, it's a long standing complaint. We've, we've been moaning about, well, we've been mentioning lag for quite a few episodes now, haven't we? So. Yeah, I mean, I think there's two factors. I mean, how much time and effort they can actually put into it this, you know, day and age with the game. The game's, uh, what, year and a half into release. Cost. Um, yeah, cost into things. Obviously, I think we discussed that last week, whether to have better servers than that. I don't think we're going to get any different servers because they're already on dedicated ser- servers, which they reiterated this week. Um, and whereas um, Battlegrounds is, I can't remember if they do have dedicated servers or not, but they're in an instance where they're still in early access. So they're trying to keep on top of stuff. And, you know, their their engine and netcode might make it easy for them to actually adjust those things on the fly, where obviously the division is a lot more complicated than that. Yeah. But you never know. Uh, but, you know, as we said, still under investigation, and we'll let you know what happens with that in a couple of weeks. Uh, make sure to keep sending videos of lag or any details you have over on the Division forums, or I'm pretty sure Joker Unix put a Reddit post up, which I think is still pinned, Rob. Have you seen that up there? I haven't been on Reddit in a, in a while, to be honest. No? Uh, but I think he's compiling like a huge list for the team over at Massive to you know look into so they can get some info on what the hell's going on. Which, uh, you know, short state of the game this week. Um, 
everyone excited for 1.7 next week? Yeah, I am I actually. Think, yeah, I think it's going to be a nice return of the game. I know we've been on a little bit of a break post PTS. Um, but it's nice, you know, year two content's coming and we're looking forward to especially what's going to be coming, not only an update 1.7, but the future, which is update 1.8 which I think we're all looking forward to the most. Quite a lot of the community yeah. are as well. Yannick was trying to talk about 1.7 on State of the Game and people were already asking for news of 1.8. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you knew people one, were going to troll it, but yeah, one, Yannick was just like, whoa, let's get this one out first. Uh, no, I just want to say now, I don't know if anybody picked up on it, the bit at the end of the State of the Game where Hamish is like, well, that's it for this week, unless Yannick wants to sing a song. And Yannick's just like, No. <laughs> It was just like, just blunt, no. <laughs> and then he was like, right, okay, let's end this shit. Did either of you get a chance to watch any of Yannick streaming yesterday afternoon? No. N- no, I didn't. He, I'll have to have a look after the He wasn't singing, but I, I do. I would like to give Yannick a little shout out for some dancing that he did. It wasn't a lot of dancing. It was more like head wobbling, but he was getting well into the 90s mix that was playing via Spotify. Um, <laughs> he refused to talk over Spice Girls Wannabe when that came on. So, you Amazing. know, Spice Girls fan confirmed. And he was giving it a lot of head sway to Seal's Kiss by a Rose, or Kiss from a Rose, whatever the title is. Yeah, I heard uh, Hamish Yannick Compassar on uh, this week's like casual division podcast that they do, and they were saying something about the Venger Boys and how I think Yannick could be the biggest <laughs> Venger Boys fan. But I, didn't- I did say he wasn't too happy about... Um, him streaming using his playlist. It was like a good playlist. Pet should be Spotify proud of that account. playlist. I don't think Pet was too happy with it. Yannick should be proud of it, maybe. But well, there was two two old school. Well, I mean, it's all ninety, so there was two Chili Peppers songs came on. Um, Smells like Teen Spirit came on. Uh, Natalie and Brulia song came on. Spice Girls, like I've said, Seal, like I've said. Um, Ace of Base came on. Apparently, it's a rule in Massive that if you work at Massive in Sweden, you have to listen to Ace of Base at least once a day. I assume Yannick was joking, but that is a sweet rule if that's a rule. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a good little playlist. I was only listening for like half an hour. So. But yeah, it's, it's quite funny how like the community is already kind of like, where's 1.8? And we have, we're literally like four, day, four or five <laughs> days away from 1.7. I mean, I'll be honest, I think I'm, I'm super hyped for 1.8 and like even one of our close friends like uh, Brad is like, if they pull it off with 1.8. Bear in mind, he's not played since Survival or like something like that. I and mean, even that was like for a week. Um, he it was, was like, one night, Mike. Like, we took him to the dark. Yeah, it was one night. To 256, and that was it. Yeah. Uh, he's like, I'll be back. Wow. I'm hoping. Oh, I'm hoping. But um, yeah, I, I actually checked out the Division casual podcast that they do. Um, and for anyone that hasn't listened to this week's episode, uh, it definitely is worth checking out because I, I sent a t- uh, tweet to Pat earlier, basically saying, you know, uh, great podcast. Um, it was kind of honest because, you know, they went over a few things obviously about the release date next week and how at the time they didn't know and they didn't want to give like a release date due to expectations and, you know, our community is like, you say one thing and they'll take it, you know, as a confirmed release date, even though they can be like, because uh? we had that ages ago. Do you remember when they were on about the PS4 dropping like a week after the Xbox or something like that? And it ended up being like three, four weeks later. Xbox, uh, PS4 players were definitely happy. Not? No. But yeah, a um, couple of things cropped up on the episode uh, that I thought was kind of interesting. One of which was any future additions after 1.8 to the live game that we have now would be free. Which I think is really cool because the, the question was asked basically like if there was any any future DLC and they didn't say anything about DLC, but they said any additions after 1.8 would be free, which is kind of cool. Um, but they did acknowledge that at the minute, anything post 1.8 is unknown at the minute. So it's all in the, in, 
all down to how successful 1.8 is with the community, I guess. So hopefully they pull it off and um, revitalize so this awesome game. Sneaky little proviso to put on the end of the, the last, quote unquote, the last official update though, isn't it? Uh, yes. well, we might do some more. It depends if it's successful or not. It's like, well, what do you class as sex? So, uh, successful. What do you class as sexy? Yeah. I mean, Rob, Rob said it was Hamish's hair last week, so. Mm. I'm going with Yannick's dancing. So. Sexy dancing. Oh, uh, we had a listener over on our Facebook group say, what was it? There was no uh, Chuck Norris's last week in last week's episode. Rob's gone blank. Russian Chuck Norris. Yeah, I know. Right? I know. Mm-hmm. Oh, you just ignore it? Yeah. Can't do it every week. I'm not rising to that. Can't do it every week. Not you, rising to that. Not I'm, not, I'm a monkey. I'm not going to dance. You calling Yannick a monkey? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get shouted at again. You know that, don't you? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. They already <laughs> love us. So Yannick a monk- Oh, God. <laughs> hey, we didn't say the game was dead. Or did we? I'm really confused. Yeah, anyway, definitely um, did. Yeah, which I thought was kind of cool. I mean, obviously, success rate. And it was kind of nice to hear, like, there's a lot of people still playing the game now, even though everyone's kind of like, the game's dead, but it's not. I mean, it's, it's like this weird kind of interim point, isn't it? And, like, when you, you've seen all this stuff that's going on for, like, with um, For Honor and, like, to us, I mean, is For Honor dead? Would you, do you know what I mean? And that, you know, the amount of effort Ubisoft are putting into that, to have like seasons and dedicated servers and speaking of what are cool it's getting a free play weekend this weekend yes i might have to check it out um i'm gonna pass yeah me too you said the beta was rubbish though didn't you mike no i enjoyed it it was just i don't know how much i could play of that it's, it's kind of like pve pvp and i'm not 100 percent on that kind of Thing, kind of like last stand but last stand's a lot better obviously um i think the other thing as well was they said or yannick said basically like they can't talk about the division two even if they were working on it in one shape or form if <laughs> if but then hamish did troll saying yeah uh, there's gonna be like the division new zealand which i thought was quite funny but yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a good episode. Um, it definitely gives like some behind the scenes stuff that you can either take as like gospel or just take with like a pinch of salt of like things they do or just kind of like the barriers that they kind of get caught up on. It seems to be, you know, I mean, they even said it like they went to marketing over the masks this week and whether they could actually announce it. And it's kind of like, it seems a bit weird that you can't go to marketing and announce masks and get everybody excited for an update that's launching next week. If you know what I mean, this is really weird how stuff plays out. So especially with like the division two, they, they can't tell us at all. And I, you know, it's, there's not massive fault. It's the big wheel that is Ubisoft. That is isn't their fault. They obviously want to keep things under wraps until everything. If there is anything in the future, I guess, but yeah, interesting podcast. Definitely go check it out. Um, as far as update 1.8 goes, there's no release date as of yet, but they will be talking about it very soon. So let's get 1.7 out of the way. And I reckon what September ish, we'll start seeing news come out. Yeah. It's got to be pretty soon for them to be already being like soon, but it depends what soon is in the division. Yeah. A couple of weeks talking about how, how well they think 1.7 has played out. Maybe a really, really short state of the game where they just go, yeah, we haven't got any news this week. Bye everybody. And then, yeah, start drip feeding 1.8 stuff, I think. How likely, and this isn't like a dig or anything, how likely do you think there's going to be an issue post-release next Tuesday that will be covered (laughs) on the state of the game? Can I plead the fifth? (laughs) I hope to God there isn't. Like, because they put so much effort and time into this. But I really hope. A a game-breaking glitch that people are going to abuse. But complain about it like tenfold. I can't believe you put this in the game, but I just can't stop using it. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! Why would you do such a thing? It's like it's like giving a kid candy and then just keep supplying him, and then complain and like the fact that like the complaining kid complaining that he's gone hyper that, and jumping off the walls. Well, yeah, or complaining that he's got chocolate. 
whichever way you want to take that. But yeah, uh, short news week for the game. I think everyone's just waiting for update 1.7 now. Uh, just one more piece of information before we do leave Division News this week. Uh, for anyone that follows like Ubisoft News or anything that's kind of going on in the Ubisoft world, um, which I kind of think leads back to the Division, take it with a pinch of salt, obviously. Um, Patrick Buck is to lead Ubisoft, Ubisoft's new Stockholm studio. Uh, so for anybody that doesn't know, uh, Patrick Buck was like one of the former, well, he's a studio manager, was a studio man manager for EA Dice. And he was there for a long time. I think it was about 14, 15 years. And he basically worked on, what was it? Battlefield 3, 4, Battlefield 1, Mirror's Edge, uh, Battlefront, quite a few you know, games and worked with like the Frostbite engine and he's heading up the studio that will be in Stockholm. Which is and, in Sweden, um, right? Which is in Sweden. Which is also where Massive is based. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what they're actually going to do, this new studio, is support Massive with uh, av the Avatar project. Yeah, Yannick said that on your stream yesterday. Yeah. They reckon they're employing somewhere in the region of 100, 120 people. But um, on the exclamation mark jobs command within Division Games Twitch, there are approximately 200 open positions. So, yeah, I think it's 200 open positions, like even at Malmo itself. Mm. So that's, it makes me think that's a lot of people. So you must have two teams running up there. Well, that's what I was about Just to say. To, if, if, even if you round it up a bit and go to 150 of the 200 are going to the brand new studio, that's still 50 people going into the quote-unquote old studio to work on a game that's quote-unquote dead. Dead game. So Hashtag dead game. Hashtag Division 2. <laughs> yes, please. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it, it's not news, but it depends. Like, take it how you, how you want. Like, I read it as massive... You know, you're employing 100 to 120 people to help work on the Avatar game, which means, ma and, and, you know, and how's ma Massive currently working? Um, you know, Red Storm and Newcastle Reflections are obviously working on update 1.7, and I wouldn't be surprised if uh, they're working on update 1.8 and what's coming, because it's the idea is meant to re revitalize what's already in the game with 1.8. Survival backgrounds, please. Uh, <laughs> so it goes to show, you know, we've said it before, Avatar is, it's not, you know, it was literally announced a couple of months ago, pre-production, if that, they'd literally just won the contract. So I would not be surprised if there's something else in the works at the studio. And we know how the system works, you know, you have like three, four different studios working on one game at a time, you know. They, they did the same with Watch Dogs and uh, Assassin's Creed and that. But um, yeah, any any other thoughts on that, Rob? No, no. Huh? I'm looking forward to playing Avatar, though. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it's better than the film. <laughs> Do you reckon it'll come out like along or alongside the films? Yeah, well, what's the, what's the first film? 2019? 2020? Depending on if actually... Depends if uh, James Cameron, James Cameron gets sticks. his in gear. Oh, yeah. He yeah. doesn't like to rush these things, does he? No. Uh, and that's pretty much it for news this week. Uh, there is no IFM, so that is it for news. But for anyone that wants to stick around, guys, what have you all been up to this week? Robert? Um, I have been playing lots of PC. I haven't really touched my PlayStation again this week. It's gonna it's, it's, it's gathering dust. Oh, oh no, I finished building my was it this? Yeah, I finished building my PC, my second PC. So I've been playing around with that. Um I have delved into the world of Warframe. I thought you were oh. gonna say Warcraft. I was like, uh oh. <laughs> um Warframe. Would you say you've filled the destiny we're filled the destiny void in your life at the middle. <laughs> I feel like there's a pun in it's, that. It's definitely a a big grind that game. It's it's 
it's I don't know I, it it's pretty much destiny but like third person but there's also some bits of division in there as well that I can see like the the build side of it and the the crafting side of it it's a really good game though and it's free and it's becoming open world soon as well I don't they haven't really given any details on when that's happening but so that's it's, it's a really good game I'm hopefully it's going to be my like go to game when I get bored of 1.7 and before D2 comes out and then when I get bored of Destiny 2 you'll get go back, back to it. it and Division nice uh something we did talk about off air last week I can't remember I don't think we talked about it on the show uh there was a game we all kind of discussed in chat wasn't there I don't know if you guys remember Hunt was it ha- Hunt oh, Shadow yeah. Hunt Showdown Run it? Showdown that's it by the guys behind uh Crisis the Crisis games and like I definitely got a disagreement I completely understand it but I watched the development diary for that and when they're like showcasing some of the things in that and there's like a pvp kind of style section in it where you have the map display when you take down like a monster or something and it sends up like a a flare on the map i just wanted to say one thing about that video yeah their development manager is a scary looking dude he looks like he should be in a metal band (laughs) he might be in a metal band (laughs) yeah probably is i mean yeah bold dude yeah, he's definitely got that look about him, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, for anybody listening, it was it was it felt to me like the dark zone. I'm not saying it is the dark zone, but I definitely got that vibe from it. Luke, what, what were your thoughts on that? I, I can understand where you're coming from with that vibe. Yeah, where, where it sort of triggers everybody to go right. These guys are they're not extracting, but it's, uh, it's like that, isn't it? They're, they're basically extracting. Yeah. yeah, let's 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 go and kill them. I think that kind of is the point, though, isn't it? it it's these guys have nearly won. Go and stop them. And it, but it looks really, really good fun. I, yeah, I would definitely be does. keeping an eye on that game. Yeah. Um, can we remember? Is it just co-op? Is it just two-player co-op? I think yeah, it's, it's just player. two players. Oh, it's four. Is it's it four-player? Yeah. Is it four? Yeah. Awesome. Because I was like, I was like, I can't take both my boys with me. What no, the it's hell, definitely four-player from what I remember. I remember. I remember Rob going. The graphics look freaking shit yeah, hot. Yeah, right? they did. Well, it's the Crytek guy, so it's going to be some way out. It's the that bank. Yeah, uh, Luke, what have you been up to this week? You had Lawbreakers. Yeah, played a bit of Lawbreakers. Um, that released what day before yesterday, I think. Choo- yeah, Tuesday. Um, so I pre-ordered that, 20-odd quid. That was pretty much a bargain. I really enjoyed the beta for a couple of hours. Um, I've only put a couple of hours into it since it came out on PS4 because I didn't play yesterday because I went to watch Dunkirk. Ah, oh, nice, man. Annual re- review, no spoilers. Definitely go and check it out. It is definitely what an hour and forty five minutes of time very well spent. Anyone complaining there's not enough action in it, what would you say to them? I don't really know what to say about that because I, I Yeah. It's a very good story that doesn't necessarily need yes, lots and lots action. of action. And and I say Agreed. lots and lots because there is still quite a lot of action in it. It's perhaps just not the same sort of action that you would instantly associate with an, a, a war film. So, yeah. But I, I went with my dad and he said something similar as soon as it came out. I said, oh, there weren't much fighting in that, was there? It's like, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> but I, I really enjoyed it. Just, yeah. Yeah. Can you not just have like a, a nice story? Well, not a nice story, you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah. It, it was very, but, very uh, well so done. What, just what you'd expect from Christopher Nolan, to be fair. But going to the opposite end of the spectrum, uh, we're going to go watch a shitload of action tomorrow, aren't we, Rob? Yeah. We're going to go see Atomic called. Blonde. Oh, Atomic that's Blonde. Yeah, that's it. Charlie's... Li- th- oh, my God, I can't even say it. Charlie's thrown kicking ass for an hour and a half or whatever it is and uh, done with the John Wick dude, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and yeah, anything else, Luke? Or is that it? I've yeah. played a bit more PUBG. I had a couple of days off of that, though, because I got back into Team Fortress 2. I've not played for God ten years or so, but it's now free on Steam, so I, I re-downloaded that. And nice. I gave in to peer pressure from you two and bought the division on PC as well. <laughs> yes, <laughs> which is and that's an absolute, what we will be streaming. That's an absolute steal at the moment. I got that for eleven quid. Yep, 
absolute bargain God of a game that is. And it's bargain. so yeah. beautiful on PC. Yeah, so anybody catching up with our DCW stream this weekend, we will be streaming on PC, from PC, hopefully, if everything goes well and we don't have technical difficulties, which seem to keep cropping up recently. Um, <laughs> Drunk stream, Master Race edition. Yes. Or, or no stream, just black, black screen. That'll be it. Master Race. But it, it is going to be a very grindy stream, isn't it? We're all, what, level four, yes. ready to go start the game, quote, quote, from from fresh because we have to be you have to be from the base operations to team up don't you so yeah oh shit I better get going <laughs> I, we'll just leave Matt yeah, I've already got yeah I've got level 14 character on there I just need to restart tomorrow and luckily uh, I've got tomorrow night to do what I want so I will be on that tomorrow if everything goes well tonight what le- what is left of tonight anyway Why? Right, what's your plan for tonight Oh, you got to finish. Um, plan yeah, what have you been for playing tonight? Like? I've been playing Bioshock. Now, when I caught up with you guys last week, I was four hours into the first game. I'm now finished the first game by Friday last week. So that was three days I finished that. I finished Bioshock in Bio- Bioshock 2 in a day. And then I'm 35 chapters at the minute through Bioshock Infinite. I've got like five, six chapters left to do tonight. So in almost wow. just over a week, I've finished three games. Do you feel like you've achieved something? <laughs> Do you have a sense of like... Yeah. No, I, honestly, of- it's been really good kind of sinking some time into something... It's, it's hard to explain because obviously we do you know we, we we all love the division but when you don't have the story there pushing you forward it's kind of it's difficult to sometimes feel engaged um so i mean going back and playing bioshock i mean i played the, the first bioshock i platinumed it um it was really cool playing through it again uh obviously you know the twists and stuff like that but like there's still you know picking up picking up like the audio logs there's a lot of, there's a lot of story there but it's not like it doesn't bog you down or anything. And then I wasn't too hooked on like the second one. And then I got, you know, a third into it. I was like, whoa, this is really good. And it kicks off. Bioshock Infinite is fucking amazing. I will say that. And graphically, it's absolutely stunning. And the story with it is really good. Um, I definitely recommend all three games. I haven't quite finished it yet, but um, apparently it's really good. And the DLCs. Without spoiling too much, go full circle. So that's what I'm playing for. Yeah. And I kind of wanted a cohesive experience. I didn't want to play a game, put it down, pick it up again, put it down. And then you're not, do you know what I mean? When we've all played other games in the past, you know, I, I've bought Uncharted. I haven't finished Uncharted. I'll go back to it. I'll play a little bit more. And I'm always kind of in that rut. So playing three games back to back, they're all kind of story focused. No multiplayer has been like a really good opportunity especially just before update 1.7 because i knew that is pretty much what i've been fighting this week is to kind of get them all three completed before 1.7 drops speaking of games that you pick up and put down and pick up again Mm -hmm. are you excited for the summer games of overwatch yes but i need to get back on it because we've got i don't know how long does it last do we know i should no idea i know it started this week it's like Monday or Tuesday, they said it was it was go. So, yeah. How much is that on PC? Just I I have already looked this up. Yeah, it's about twenty twenty something pounds, Mm. and I'm very fucking tempted. Luke Luke's on board. He's (laughs) look. No, I'm not buying more games on PC (laughs) on PC that I've got on PlayStation. The division is it. Game over. To be fair, I'm like uh, obviously I'm getting to the end of Bioshock, and I'm looking for something similar. And I'm like, what's what can I play? And I saw Jarrett, our editor, put out a tweet earlier. But before he put that out, I was like, what's the closest game to it? And there's there's two games out at the moment. It's like Prey, which apparently is fucking amazing, and on PC it would be amazing. Um, and Dishonored one and two, they're both out at the minute. So oh man, you, you should might. have um, got Dishonored in the summer sale. Like they were, it was really cheap. I think really it's like cheap. three quid or something on CD keys. So I'll have to have a look. But they've they're just releasing like huge DLC content for Dishonored Two, so I, I don't know. 
we'll see. I'm not, I don't know. And I think I need a break after Dishonored because when I start looking at like um, key codes on doors at work, I'm like, where can I find the key code in the game? <laughs> I need to like take a break oh dear. for a little bit. Plus, it's been a violent week of bashing people in the head, so there's not much more I can say. Mm. And on that awkward note, <laughs> let's end this bit. Robert. What? Where can the listeners find us? Um, you can find us at Sip Radio on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, tweet us with the hashtag Team Sip Rep, as we are all affiliated with that hashtag. If you have any questions or feedback for the show, send them to SipRepRadioPod at gmail.com. Luke? You can find Sip Rep Radio on any of the following platforms. iTunes and Apple Podcasts on iOS devices. I hate that. Google Play Music, SoundCloud, Overcast, Stitcher, Player.fm, Pocket Casts, RSS feeds, and please rate, view, and subscribe. And make sure to check out Mash Those Buttons, our family, over on Twitter, Facebook, and the YouTubes. Go check out some of the awesome podcasts that are a part of the Mash Those Buttons family, like In Orbit, Watchpoint Radio, and some others that you will find on there. Uh, don't forget Twitch as well, because a lot of those dudes have been starting up yep. streams. T bot. I know Jarrett's bit got his own um, stream, and uh, a lot of the guys now actually do live podcast recordings. That's awesome. On we, Twitch, we will never do that. <laughs> you say that now. If you want us to do that, leave a comment no, on no, our Twitter. No, no, not with the technical difficulties I, we've been having recently. Fucking hell! <laughs> uh, don't forget, you can also find the episodes um, on YouTube and. Occasionally, the IFMs when we when we can be asked to do them. <laughs> uh, yeah, leave, leave I'll a be back on that this week, please. Yeah, and thank you to Sean Winder and Sean Tilly over on the Division One Elites for the awesome stuff they put up over on the Facebook group and for letting us post our podcast on a weekly basis and anything else we like over there. So please go over and check them out. Thank you for listening, agents, and we will catch you. In update 1.7. Woohoo. Bye bye. Bye.